I'm about to totally wow you with the science of how sitting in a sauna for just a short amount of time after a workout or in general can totally shift the way that your body metabolizes energy and shift the way that your body builds muscle and burns fat. Hey, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. New videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time and all kinds of other videos in between. And also make sure you hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. And always, I'm wearing Hylite, so make sure you check out Hylite.com for all the apparel that you can. So when we're looking at how a sauna affects the body, we're looking at something known as hyperthermic conditioning. The hyperthermic conditioning is just like the name implies. We're conditioning ourselves to be a little bit more exposed to a higher temperature. So with hyperthermic conditioning, we're acclimating our bodies to heat independent of aerobic activity. So normally, if you go out for a run or you do some kind of aerobic exercise, your core body temperature is going to go up simply because you're moving. But with hyperthermic conditioning, we're trying to elicit the same response, but without the actual activity. We're just trying to get the core body temperature up and still trying to get the same benefits. And now the science is showing the benefits are there. So basically what we're doing is we're trying to build a generalized tolerance to physiological stress by adapting to heat. So just like anything, we have an adaptation process that occurs. And when we expose ourselves to a lot of heat, we do have this adaptation that occurs at a cellular level and different metabolic levels. Now the biggest one that we probably know of already is the increase in blood flow and plasma volume. This one kind of goes without saying, okay? When you have more heat, your blood vessels dilate, you get more blood flow. Yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but there's a lot of really cool stuff coming out in the way of what are called heat shock proteins. Now the studies that I'm gonna reference in this video, and believe me, there's quite a few of them, are going to really be centered around heat shock proteins and what these heat shock proteins do for not only your recovery, but your overall metabolism. So a heat shock protein is a highly conserved protein that sits inside of a cell. Every single organism has them, and every single cell has heat shock proteins. So they're proteins that sit in sort of a reserve mode, waiting to get acted upon by high stress. For instance, high heat. That's why they're called heat shock proteins. So when our cells are exposed to heat shock, these proteins are released, and they protect what are called the folding and unfolding of these different proteins inside of a cell. Inside of a cell, when you build a cell, you have proteins that fold on top of each other. Now, sometimes they unfold, sometimes they fold. So these heat shock proteins stabilize them. They hold them in place so that they have a little bit more time to recover when exposed to extreme conditions like high heat. So this is great. We know that these exist. We know that they protect the cells. But what does it have to do with how our bodies work and how our bodies feel, perform, and even ultimately get conditioned? Well, to take a look at this, we want to look at a study that was published in the Journal of Athletic Training. This study took a look at 25 healthy adult subjects, and it wanted to investigate what would happen to their cardiovascular system, their hormonal system, and ultimately their cell structure in general and heat shock proteins if they sat in a sauna for an extended period of time or if they did not. So what they did is they had them sit in a sauna that was 73 degrees Celsius some periods of time, and other days they had them sit in an area that was 26 degrees Celsius. So a stark, stark difference between the two, one obviously being more like a sauna and one being more like just a standard, regular environment. So they had them do this for 30 minutes on separate days. And then they went ahead and they measured their blood work after each situation. And what they found was pretty darn intriguing. Of course, they found that the core body temperature increased after sitting in a sauna. It increased by 0.8 degrees Celsius, which is a pretty dramatic increase. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that increasing the body temperature increases fatty acid mobilization and lipolysis. So that right then and there, obviously, boosted some fat loss. That's great. But they also found that there was an increase in their heart rate by roughly 22 to 23 beats per minute. Now, if you've seen my other videos again, you know that increasing that heart rate also leads to fat loss. It's pretty straightforward. Then they found that there was a decrease in blood pressure, which may have had to do with the increase in stroke volume, the heart not having to work as hard, meaning the blood was able to flow quite a bit easier. But then we get into the interesting stuff, a 58% increase in norepinephrine. Okay, if you see my other videos again, you know that norepinephrine, noradrenaline, epinephrine, all those things play a big role in fatty acid utilization and mobilization. So if we have higher levels of adrenaline like that, then we are ultimately burning more fat and have all kinds of different recovery mechanisms kicking into place so long as we're not doing it for too much time. But then what's important here is they found that the heat shock proteins that existed in the cells increased by 53.9%. So we know now that heat shock proteins do elevate when we're just exposed to high heat, when we're sitting in a sauna. But what does this have to do with muscle mass? Where am I connecting the dots? Well, when we look at how this process works, 
it makes a lot of sense. The heat shock proteins stabilize the folds inside the cell, which means that the cell is able to recover a little bit easier. It's in a situation where it can be acclimated and it can actually allow recovery to occur. So by stabilizing those folds, we're putting the cell in a great place to be able to harness the nutrients that you consume and grow. But believe it or not, the heat shock proteins also attract amino acids to the site of a damaged area. So for example, if you go and you work out, you're going to cause micro trauma inside your cells. This micro trauma is what you need to have recovered to ultimately build muscle. Well, that trauma is a damaged site. So when you have high levels of heat shock proteins from sitting in a sauna, it means the amino acids are going to gravitate to that damaged area and stimulate recovery. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So therefore, we start building the muscle again. But additionally, what ends up happening is these heat shock proteins stabilize the folds and allow the folds to stack on top of each other correctly. Remember, inside of a cell, we have folds of proteins that unfold and fold together. And if those folds are inaccurate, the cell doesn't build right. And eventually, apoptosis will occur, where the cell just naturally dies. So in the presence of heat shock proteins, the cell is stabilized so the proteins can actually build themselves properly. They can fold properly, and the cell becomes high quality. Therefore, you're getting more muscle mass by utilizing a sauna right after a workout. But there's a little bit more to this. Maybe you've heard of something known as rhabdo. Okay, it's rhabdo for short, but it stands for rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis is basically a condition where you work out so hard or you have so much muscle trauma that the muscle cell actually dies and leaks its contents into the bloodstream. When it leaks its contents into the bloodstream, it goes into the kidneys and creates a very toxic environment. That's why people that suffer from rhabdomyolysis end up sitting in the hospital for a number of days and then are immobilized for a while. They're not even allowed to work out. Now these heat shock proteins are not only shown to protect the kidneys, from these heat shock proteins that get dumped into the blood, but they've also been shown to prevent muscle atrophy associated with the immobilization. So when you're looking at someone who is suffering from an injury and they have to stop and they have to not work out for a while, if they just sit in a sauna, they can stop the muscle atrophy. Now, you may not be able to stop it entirely, but you can at least slow it. So when you're in a situation where you have an injury and you're afraid you're gonna lose muscle mass, you're afraid you're gonna get fat, well, literally sitting in a sauna can stimulate the right kind of things to keep you frozen in time, or I guess I should say melted in time, so that you don't end up suffering from the issues you're worried about. Okay, but what about physical performance? Well, this is where it gets really interesting because physical performance obviously leads to muscle mass. If we can have more physical performance, then we can destroy our muscles a little bit more, which means we can elicit more of a recovery response. We can have bigger muscles, we can be leaner, we can be more athletic, we can have it all. Now, the first thing that comes to mind, obviously, again, is the stroke volume increase. Okay, we know that acclimating to heat increases stroke volume. We know that you're gonna get more blood to a specific area. But let's take a look at the science and how it really works when it comes down to specific performance indicators. So this study was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, and it took a look at test subjects before and after eight days of heat acclimation. So what they did is they had these test subjects do six hours of submaximal activity in the heat, followed by 45 seconds of high intensity activity in the heat after these eight days of acclimation. But they measured them before and after. So what they found was that after they were heat acclimated, they had some pretty dramatic changes to how their body responded to the actual workout. After acclimation, the athletes ended up utilizing 40 to 50% less muscle glycogen than they did before. What the heck is going on? So basically what that means is they were tapping into 40 to 50% less energy. Now it has to do with muscle perfusion. And what that means is that since they were acclimated to the heat, blood was able to move through the muscle and get to the organs significantly, 40 to 50% more significantly, more efficiently. So what that means is that you are able to work out in a much more efficient way, utilize less of your stored energy, and be able to ultimately perform better. Imagine if you could work out for 40 or 50% longer or harder simply by getting used to being in the heat. That's what this study proved. That is a dramatic, dramatic difference. But it doesn't stop there. There was another study that took a look at the red blood cell count of endurance athletes. Now this is where it gets crazy because red blood cells deliver oxygen. So if we have more red blood cells, we have more oxygen, which obviously means that we can work out harder, work out easier in some ways. But what this study found is that test subjects that just did 30 minutes of sauna two times per week ended up being able to run for 32% longer than when they didn't use the sauna. A 32% increase in their overall endurance capacity. 32% longer of a run. That is a huge, 
huge difference. And we're talking about endurance athletes to begin with. So these were people that were already accustomed to being able to run to their maximal ability and to max capacity. And they were able to push it almost a third further. Now that ended up being 7.8% increase in their red blood cell count. 7.8% increase in the amount of oxygen being delivered to your organs, to your cells, to your muscle, to your brain. That is powerful. And that's just with two times per week of sitting in a sauna for 30 minutes. So if anything comes out of this video, it's to not be shy of the sauna. I know it can be tough when you're in a gym and there's a lot of people around and you don't necessarily want to go in the sauna. Maybe you just buy one for your own garage, whatever you want to do. There's some infrared saunas out there that are pretty affordable. But the fact is 20 or 30 minutes, two times per week can elicit a 30% improvement in your endurance activity and can truly, truly start to shape shift the way that your body metabolizes things. It's all about adaptation here. The stronger we get, the better we get. And what doesn't kill us makes us stronger to an extent. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. Ideas for future videos, you know where to put them. I'll see you soon.